All right, everyone. Hello, it's Sandra here. I'm looking in on my clear tote that I'm using only leaf mold as a worm bedding. I'm not sure how long this experiment's going to go on for because, quite honestly, we all know by now the worms are loving this leaf mold. But I did, for my own purposes, I wanted to see what leaf mold looks like in its finishing by worms. How long does it take to process? And what does it look like? I see worms on the top when I remove the bubble wrap. I've always pulled the bubble wrap in on itself in case there is a wisp in the bubbles. But I see a lovely healthy worm right on the top, chowing down on the leaf mold. I can feel nice moisture. Uh, if you've been following along, you know that the leaf mold was a lot less processed when I put it in here. Uh, just a few weeks ago, so the worms are doing a great job. Now, initially, I did put that many worms in here, but uh, we had to use this as sort of a rescue vessel um, when we were having our jailbreak. Uh, Landon pulled worms off the lid of uh, Peekaboo and put them in here, so we never actually... Uh, discussed how many worms he pulled off doesn't matter um, but so these some of these are peekaboo peekaboo's worms which is okay that just means that there's a larger worm population in here than I had previously and which means they're going to need more food but you can see as I go further down in the bin I'm finding more worms and more moisture actually which is typical with any bedding its water retention is incredible. I, I, I don't moisten it. It just keeps its water level. Maybe that's why it's, you know, in addition to the microbial content, maybe that's why worms like it so much. It's got a lovely, even moisture texture um, uh, content. Uh, also, it doesn't have uh, the critters that adding leaves to your bin has. Uh, I've, I've noticed that when I add leaves straight from the garden, sometimes you can bring a slug in. That's something trying to sprout in it. It's curious. That might be another maple tree. Uh, you know, you might get the odd baby slug on the lid or walls of your bin. The leaf mold, I haven't seen any, any other critters. Um, I'm down, at, I found a more compressed bunch and obviously I broke up a little bit of a party there. So this bin is, is doing great. You know, I don't think there's any concerns for any of these worms. So what I'm going to do is, I don't have to excessively fluff it, I don't think. You know, fluffing is a way that we assess our bins and so I'm not worried about the little bit of compression that might be at the bottom. You know, if it's, um, if it's compressed, that means usually water is accumulating, castings are accumulating, and if the worms don't like it, the worms, they can get out of it. So, but what I am going to do is I am going to uh, pocket feed. So I've, I've sort of um, gone deeper on this pocket right here, or this corner pulling out the material, um, disturbing some of the neighbors. Uh, gosh, that's one thing with leaf mold. You can't flick it off your hands easily like you can other types of bedding like cardboard. I've got some new leaf mold. There we go. New leaf mold going into that corner. Again, I can't really check my hand for wisps because it all looks like a fuzzy gorilla. All right, and then I've got a piece of watermelon for these worms. And I've got more leaf mold bedding. So I think this is just going to last quite a while. I might put in my notes to come back here in two weeks. Hi everyone, it's actually a couple of days later and I've decided to go back into this bin for a couple of reasons. 
First, I neglected to put some buffer down when I put that huge chunk of watermelon in here. And so um, given that leaf mold probably has no natural buffer in it, I imagine in the wild, if pH gets something that is distasteful to the worms, they just crawl into the other direction. So I'm just going into this bin and just going to rectify that. And the other thing I thought I would do is I would check on, um, well, check on the status of the watermelon, obviously, but also um, it would be kind of an indication of how many worms are in this bin. Again, I am seeing worms on the top of the leaf mold, indicating they are, they're, they're compost worms. And look at that, I'm finding them on the top. This isn't a worm, this is a, a stick. A leaf stem but yes uh, and this is another leaf stem I thought that was a worm but it's a leaf stem um, my feeding corner is here with the marker let me just dig down and I thought you know given that it's watermelon I was hoping that we'd see the crowd but you know I see leaves on or worms on the top here so maybe when there's leaf mold on the menu Watermelon doesn't draw as large a crowd. Let's see, let's pull up this watermelon. It's been in here a couple of days. Okay, I see interest in it. The leaf mold is so dark in color. Okay, um, there are the worms. I'm just trying to gauge how many worms are in here. Let me dig under this watermelon. I know I said I was gonna leave this bin for two weeks. But again, just second guessing my plans and you know, that's okay. That's okay if you sort of move away from finishing up a bin thinking you've taken care of it and you decide to come back, that's okay. So yes, as I, ex I um, expected, lots of moisture in this corner now, um, extra moisture from the watermelon. All right, so here's my watermelon what's left of it not very much left of it actually um but with its lovely coating of worms here's some buffer going down i don't know if i've ever added buffer to oh i have because even though this is a leaf mold bedding bin i have been feeding it food not a lot of you know, uh, food scraps, but I, because for the longest time, the worm population didn't support a lot of food. But uh, no, there had been buffer going in with other food scraps. And I saw quite a few worms in there and they had mostly, you know, peeled off everything except the green rind from the watermelon. So I had next to me here, I had, I've been going through worm castings and baiting and pulling out worms and you know, I know this looks like castings, but if you go under this veneer of castings, you see all the worms uh, in here. And I was going to start, I was going to add some more bench strength to this leaf mold only bin if I felt uh, it wasn't uh, sufficient. But you know, maybe I'll just add a few. Maybe I'll just add a few. Because I've got extra worms, so. Don't know how many that is. Oops, they're crawling off my hands, so let me grab. Sort of, if you had to put them in a ball, it would be about mm, a golf ball sized ball of worms, or about the finger there. I'm gonna do two things at once. There we go, get the worms off my fingers to the best of my ability. Get this out of here. go and those worms will find their new home in this leaf mold bedding bin. Now let's flatten out the leaf mold a little bit and I don't think um, I will leave them the full two weeks that I was expecting. That watermelon is a lot more depleted than I thought it was going to be and uh, so I think these worms are going to need more frequent checking in than I had speculated. So there's a, a hint, check on your bins, uh, especially if you do something different. 
Uh, it's a good reminder to me, you know, check in on them in a couple of days. Are things going like you thought they were? If not, change your plans. All right, I've got worms on the plastic. So down it goes. And like I said, this is an opaque bin. So I'm using to kind of darken it, which is probably why I'm seeing worms feeding on the top, is I'm using just some overturned egg cartons to darken that top so that these worms um, are free to move around even though I've got the overhead lights on. All right, everyone, take care.